like looking back at it, I'm like, we really did that. Yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, am I allowed to say this? This sounds so messed up now that I'm even talking about it. Hey everyone, happy rush week. <laughs> Maybe not if you're watching this later on, but welcome back to my channel. My name is Maddie if you're new here, but today I'm going to be reacting to Alabama Rush TikTok. It's like trending all over TikTok. Don't really know why. I guess like to me, it just seems normal just because that's what I went through. I do understand because it is one of the biggest recruitments in the nation, but people are going crazy about it. So I thought I would do a little reaction video coming from a Pi Fi from Alabama myself. I rushed back in 2017. I thought the shirt was very appropriate for today. I also got the hat too, you know. I literally got these the day of bid day and here I am still having it. So I was a Pi Fi for all four years. I was at Alabama. I graduated back in May, so I'm no longer like an active, I guess. I'm like alum status. I'm going to be reacting to some of the TikToks that I see. I know there's been people like creating rumors, false rumors about recruitment and like how it all works. And I'm gonna put those down to rest. And also just reacting to some other things that I see, maybe answer some questions y'all have asked along the way. And I don't know, I just thought this would be really interesting considering so many people are interested in it. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, TikTok, of course. I know there's a lot of girls who are doing like outfits of the day or whatever. Hi, I'm Ashley and my dress is from Lavish. My necklace is repurposed. My hoops are from TJ Maxx and my shoes are from Vince Camuto. Okay, first of all, the dress is adorable. And she said it's from Lavish. I'm assuming she got that for the boutique in Midtown Village in Tuscaloosa. So if you're like in the Alabama area, you know exactly what she's talking about. I don't know where their other locations are or if it's like a national thing, but I do love Lavish. I have a few things from there. Okay. Really do love that. Hi, dress. I'm Katie. My dress is from Hello Molly. My shoes are Steve Madden. My bracelets are Kendra Scott. My necklace is Kate Spade. And hi, I'm Ash. That dress is so cute. I was a fan. They both are really cute. So you found yourself on Alabama Rush TikTok. Okay, I haven't seen this one yet. We're we're gonna see what she has to say. What is sorority recruitment? And let's see if things are true or false in this one. Or you're on people who are on Alabama Rush TikTok TikTok. And you're wondering what in the world Rush is. Welcome to history class, I've got you covered. This is a summary of just how National Panhellenic recruitment works. So the rush that's going on right now is for the National Panhellenic Council organization. And while they are um, at least technically and legally integrated, uh, these none of the historically black um, or historically Asian, et cetera, sororities and fraternities are included. And this isn't gonna be exclusive to Alabama, it's just gonna be a summary of how recruitment works. So when you decide you'd like to join a sorority, the summer before is actually a lot of work. You start by putting together a resume, maybe a few headshots, and you work on getting letters of recommendation from an alumna of each sorority on the campus. That is very true. The summer before rush was actually one of the most stressful summers I've ever had. Like, first of all, completing everything, just going to Alabama itself just for school, but also like preparing for rush. I forgot like all the headshots and stuff that they needed. I personally think it's stupid. I've never been on like the committee who like looks through these folders, but like I just feel like they're kind of irrelevant. They're like for, I'm not even gonna get into that right now, but you have to send in your high school resume, obviously. They want a headshot and a full body shot. You do need a letter of recommendation and I've had so many people DM me asking for one, but like I'm not gonna write one unless I actually know you personally because I didn't get one from anyone that I didn't know um because like i'm not gonna ask someone who doesn't know me to write like a recommendation letter like that just doesn't make sense in my mind so there were like what 12 or 16 sororities through formal recruitment i don't know the exact number i could be so wrong but you had to get a letter from each for each sorority from an alum you have like a whole folder put together and i went all out and made each folder look so cute and you had to have like 16 separate folders for each sorority uh, or like one folder for each sorority so like 16 different ones there might not even be 16 sororities i still don't know the exact number maybe 13. that's beside the point but like I, you really don't need to put that much effort into it you really don't <laughs> You have to remember the South is a place where a lot of these people really value tradition and a lot of them know each other from high school or camp or in the same sort of family situations. 
And unfortunately, that plays a big role in this stuff. So anyway, on the first day of recruitment, um, everybody goes to every single sorority house. And then from there on out, there's what's called a mutual selection process. So the girls who are trying to join a sorority essentially rank all of the houses um, from their most to least favorite. And then the girls in the sororities have this big meeting where they rank all the girls who have come through. And then there's this kind of complicated mathematical system that decides how many invitations each sorority is going to get for the next the parties on the next day. Okay, that's also true. I don't know the science behind it, but like, <laughs> this sounds so messed up now that I'm even talking about it. But like, whenever you are a freshman or a sophomore, or whoever, like going through Rust trying to find a sorority, like you're forever home, if you will, um, you do have, you obviously have a say in what houses you want to go to next. So Ice Water Tees is like the first round where you go to every single sorority house. After each round, most rounds last two days, This you go to a computer and rank like your top houses and like which ones like you'd be willing to drop basically. And that does not guarantee, like the ones that you put at the top, that it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get them back because they could drop you the next day. Because I know for a fact that I went to buy me, love them, and then I was dropped the next day, but like I put them at the top. So there's no guarantee like whatever you put at the top, like you're gonna get them back because it's mutual selection because they also vote on you too. And the whole part where they have a big meeting. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, am I allowed to say this? So after the whole round of recruitment, there, we only have big meetings after each round. So not after each day, after each round, because we have to see all the girls before we vote on them. There's like a middle, there's three different sections. So like the green, if you're in the green, that means you're going to be invited to the next round. If you're in the red, like we dropped you. And most of the time, if you're dropped in the first round, it's because like your GPA didn't meet our GPA requirement or something completely out of the ordinary. But if you're in the yellow, that means we have to vote on you because we weren't sure if we were to keep you or not. And that's where this big meeting comes to play. Um, and we do talk about each girl individually. The way we do it, there's like no faces to a name, it's just a name. So like if you talk to a girl that day, like you stand up and talk about her and then everyone else votes on her based on what you said. <laughs> so that's what that meeting is about. I know that can sound kind of like terrifying and messed up, but it, logically it's like the only way that makes sense because my year we had 2,600 girls go through. That's a lot of people to talk to and around and for like two, 300 girls, to like narrow down, you know? So it's like, it's a lot. <laughs> but I don't know what the mathematical like equation is to figure out like how many girls are gonna be invited to the next round. Like I don't know any part of that. I just know the voting process. Nice of a process as possible. They usually do like a pro con pro thing, but I, it can be kind of brutal. It's unfortunately a little bit of a superficial process. The pro con thing is true too. I, I don't know the rules on if I can like explain that or not. <laughs> And I really just don't feel like getting in trouble, so... Not always superficial, but just, you know, ranking girls is kind of mean. It is, honestly. I feel like this whole process should be completely... Like, I feel like this whole thing should just not even be it. Like, I feel like we should rush like guys do. I think that is completely more fair, and it's not so, like, perfect-seeming, you know? Because, like... I kid you not, whenever I walked into each and every house, like, I know those girls don't act that way all the time. Like, I know that for a fact. And, like, whenever you do join that sorority, everything's kind of different, you know? Like, no one's always looking that way all the time or acting this way or that way. Like, there's a little bit of an act going on, which I don't want to come across as, like, fake or whatever, but, like, whenever you want people to join your sorority, you're going to kind of put on, not a front, but, like, you know what I mean? I don't want that to come across as bad. But where was I going with this? Okay, there is another way to do it. The way guys do it. Like, I really do think they should put away this whole voting thing. I think it's completely unfair because it's like, one, it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You maybe talk to three or four girls that week for the whole sorority. And so like, you're basing the whole entire sorority off of three or four girls. So like, if you only talk to like three or four, maybe five girls in the sorority, that's like 2% of the people there. Like, that just doesn't mathematically make sense, now that I'm really thinking about it. I actually had a lot of fun during the whole rush week, like, being a freshman trying to find a house. Like, I would do that every single year if I could, then be on the whole other side of it. Anyway, the next day, uh, all the girls who are rushing, it's technically called recruitment, get a card that has their schedule, and your schedule could be as full or as empty as, as kind of as popular as you are. I've 
as popular as you are. I hate how she uses that word because that like doesn't make sense. So after each round, you will probably get cut from a few houses. Some, a lot of girls do get full cards, meaning like they don't get dropped from a house or whatever. So it's like on sisterhood round, which is like the third round of Rush, you could have like six houses, five or six houses. And that's like a full card if you have a full number of houses. And then pref, my year we had three houses, but now they changed it to two. So if you get two houses on pref, that's like a full card. You just have the max number of houses for that round. But you can also have like a small number of houses. Say for sisterhood example, six houses max. You could get back two houses for sisterhood. It just depends on who you drop and who drops you. So there's no guarantee if you're gonna have like a full schedule. very constructed you don't realize this until your second year but they like line you up in order they choose which girls you're going to talk to based on what a priority you are to be recruited by the sorority and who they think you'll be a best fit with so that continues until the last day which is called prep night okay so she does have a point whenever she's talking about parties so i know there's rumors that go around where it's like if you're placed in the back of the house or in this corner of the house like you're not going to get a bid back or something like that <laughs> Thanks, Marley. I can't speak on all houses, but part of that is true. It does change every year. I'm not gonna say like where you're placed in the house is gonna guarantee you a bid, cause it really doesn't. Um, but it is based off of like certain points that you have. This is not gonna be like accurate to Pi Fi whatsoever, but say the left side of the dining room, like if you're placed there, you're like top of our list for that round. And then you're all, if you're on the right side, you're like towards the bottom of our list because whenever we're placed in like rotation groups, like if you're like one of the most more involved girls or whatever, like you're gonna talk to the higher ranked girls. And on prep night, it's a very solemn ceremony. You're only going to one, two or three sororities usually. And basically like the goal is to just make the girls feel an emotional connection to the sorority. And then the next morning is bid day. And if you've matched with a house, you find out which one and you start the pledge process, which isn't called pledging anymore. Okay, yeah, that's true. Pref or preference round is the last round where you get to decide which house best fits for you. Um, like I said, my year we had three pref houses. I prefed, obviously Pi Phi, um, AD Pi, and Alpha Phi. Whereas now they only have two houses. So it's kind of scary to go from like six or five houses to two. Like you really have to narrow it down after that, which is like so scary. But preference round is not like happy, not, not like happy, but it's like more mellow like there's not screaming singing going on it's kind of weird like i felt so odd walking in some of the houses i was like what am i about to join what are why what are they singing i don't even know what they're saying everyone's dressed in white pi if i have these like flower crowns whatever and some houses have it really dark but it's like supposed to be a conversation that's like emotional not really emotional but like heart to heart deep conversation not like, oh, well, what'd you do in high school sort of thing, or like, what are you wanting in a friend group? It's like deeper. Like our goal is not to make the rushy cry or anything. Like, I don't know why some people think that they need to make them cry. That's just like, no. During my prep round, I did not cry at any of the houses. Some girls do get emotional. It's been a very long leave, but for me, I was just having a fun time. So I was like, okay, like I already know what house I wanna go whatever so if you already know what house you're going like during prep round and you're at a house that like you just don't want to go to like literally tell them like i think i found my place at another home like i think i found my home somewhere else whatever we can just talk about something stupid because you don't want to waste an hour of their time for them to try and like convince not convince you but like to talk about their sister so i was always grateful being on the other side of rush like if a girl told me like oh i already found my home somewhere else i'd be like okay cool we can just talk about literally anything else and sometimes that can really take the pressure off of the both of us and they might even enjoy the house more and enjoy that conversation more and switch to our house which that's not our goal we're not trying to get the most people or anything we're trying to find some like people who like actually want to be a pi fi or actually want to be in that house so like, that's not our goal to try to get the most. That's not even like a thing. Um, it's all, the decision is all up to y'all for the most part. And if we think that like you're, you'd be a good fit and find people in the house. Okay, that was kind of a lot. I didn't th realize that was gonna be the second video, but we're gonna carry on. Do 
Okay, so this is convocation, which is like essentially the very first day of rush. You don't go to any houses. This is basically where they give you all the information of like what's gonna go on during the week and you just kind of wear whatever, shorts and a tank top and literally every girl looks the same. Outfit of the day, Alabama Philanthropy Day 2. Okay, yeah, so for Philanthropy Round, Panhellenic gives you guys two uh, different t-shirts to wear. So for like Philanthropy Day 1, you wear, I guess, this t-shirt. For Philanthropy Day 2, you wear this t-shirt and you can wear it with like a skirt or shorts or something cute, like not jean shorts or anything like that. Shorts like she's wearing. You can get really creative with it if you wanted to. Okay, so this is, in the background, is a fine new house. It's like the big white house on the corner. I was obsessed with that house. I was like, I want to be in the white house. But, um, so what these girls are wearing, it's, this is for work week. And basically work week is just the week before rush where all the sororities like literally learn all of the door songs, hello songs and stuff like that. I know they got rid of door songs this year actually, which is insane. But if y'all want to know what a door song looks like, um, I was front row in mine my junior year or going into my junior year. I'll just play it. Yeah, so that's that. Um, don't really have any opinion on that. Other than like looking back at it, I'm like, we really did that. For Ice Water Tees, which is the first round, we see every single PNM or potential, which stands for potential new member, but they go through our house. So we have like 16 parties each day. So we had to do that door song 16 times for two days in a row. I think I had whiplash. Anywho. <laughs> but no, my job for that year, I was strictly the door song. I like requested, I was like, I just wanna be in the door song. I just wanna be in the hello song, goodbye song, whatever. That was my job for that year. I didn't talk to a single girl. Other than one, actually, because she was a, subscri a subscriber and wanted to talk to me, so I went over there. But other than that, I strictly was just like, whooping my hair back and forth. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so they had these really nice porta potties out there, um, which was actually so nice. They're better than like normal porta potties, and I know it's like really extra to have porta potties like that, but when there's no AC, like the only AC you get are the houses that you go to, and it's still humid as crap in there because there's so many girls in there all at once, like it's very beneficial. So, okay, so this is the Pi Fi house. <laughs> But to make work week more fun, there's always like theme spirit day. So obviously like this day was like angel theme because our, what, not mascot, but it's like we're angels, the halos sort of thing. Yeah. Seven in the morning. It's seven in the morning. <laughs> Literally people would be in the most outrageous outfits and costumes for work week. Okay, so that's all the reacting I'm gonna do. But if you guys like a part two, let me know. I don't know if this is interesting or not. Maybe it's not and irrelevant, but thought this would be fun to do. So I hope y'all enjoyed. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. I know for one of our rounds, like if you're in the formal library, like no one ever goes in the library, but if you're in that library for one of the rounds, like you will be getting a bed tomorrow. <laughs>